Hello and welcome to another video from War Secrets. The T-72 evolved from the T-64, which had significant expenses and relied on poor developmental capabilities. About 25,000 T-72 tanks were manufactured and many of them have remained in service for decades thanks to restoration. It has been widely exported and has seen action in more than 40 countries in wars. The T-90, which was unveiled in 1992 as a modification of the T-72B, is still in production today. History of Manufacturing The first manufacturing run began in Nizhny Tagil in 1972. The Soviet Army put these to the test. In 1973, the last trial batch of Object 172M was manufactured, tested, and accepted into service as the T-72 in 1974. In a series of block improvements, Uralvagon KB continued to iterate on the T-72. Ceramic steel laminate turret armor was introduced in Object 174. A laser rangefinder was used in place of the coincidence rangefinder. When Object 174 went into production in 1978, it was given the designation T-74A. Object 174M significantly enhanced turret armor. To compensate for the extra weight, a more powerful V-84 engine was introduced. As the T-72B, the Object 174M entered service in 1985. Between 1971 and 1982, the Polish Colonel Ryszard Koglinski is alleged to have supplied certain technical documentation on the T-72 to the CIA. Development of the T-72 Tank The T-72 was the result of a design competition between two teams. Alexander Morozov commanded Morozov KB in Kharkiv. Leonid Kartsev commanded Ural Vagon KB and Nitsky Tagil. Two designs based on the T-62 were tested in 1964 to improve on it. The Nitsky Tagil's Object 167, 262B and Kharkiv's Object 434. Object 434 was a highly technological prototype. A new design arose in Kharkiv under the guidance of Morozov with the hole lowered to the smallest size conceivable. To do this, the team was reduced to three men with the loader removed and an automated loading system installed. Object 167 was based on an Object 140 that Kartsev and Valery Vendiktikov refurbished. Now, Kartsev's preferred model Object 167 was more advanced than Kartsev's Object 165 and Object 166. When asked to develop Object 166 for manufacturing in October 1961, Kartsev refused and instead offered to prepare Object 167. The Object 166 and Object 165 were renamed T-62 and T-62A, respectively, after this plan was rejected. Unlike the Kharkiv tank, it did not use cutting-edge technology. The T-62 turret and a manual loader were employed in prototypes. The tank was put through comparative testing with the Object 434 in 1964, with the latter proving superior to both the T-62 and T-55. Ural Vagonzavod director I.V. Okunov and Soviet premier Nikita Khrushchev preferred Object 167 because it was cheaper. Dmitry Ustinov, deputy chairman of the Soviet Union's Council of Ministers, feared the concurrent development of Object 167 risked the Kharkiv tank's future. The Soviet Union's Council of Ministers authorized the Object 432, later serializes the T-64 into production in December 1962, effectively killing Kartsev's tank. Kartsev kept working on the Object 167. An autoloader was built into Object 167M. In May of 1964, this model was also rejected. Early production problems were obvious, but a powerful lobby grew around Morozov in Moscow, advocating for Object 434 and preventing competitor advancements and ideas from being considered. In May 1968, the T-64A was approved for Soviet Army service. The T-64's reduced size made it difficult to find a suitable power plant. The chosen 700 horsepower 5TDF engine was unreliable, difficult to repair, and had a lifespan comparable to World War II designs. The T-72's gun turret drive system The T-72A's primary armament is a 125mm 2A46 smoothbore cannon with a light alloy thermal sleeve and a bore evacuator. The thermal sleeve is divided into four sections, two in front and two behind the bore evacuator. In both planes, the 125mm gun is stabilized. The 2EH-28M is the name of the gun stabilization system. APF-SDS has a maximum range of 2100 meters, HEAT-FS has a maximum direct fire range of 4000 meters, and HEFRAG-FS has a maximum indirect fire range of 9400 meters. An automatic carousel loader is installed on the turret floor as well as the back wall of the turret on the T-72A. 
In the lower half of a carrier, the projectile is loaded while the cartridge and propellant are loaded in the upper half. There are 24 ready-to-use projectiles on the carousel. The 125mm cannon must take up the carrier and ram both the projectile and the powder charge when it loads. This allows for a rate of fire of 8 rounds per minute. However, the automatic loader's reliability has been questioned. The T-72A's primary 125mm cannon is stabilized, allowing it to fire on the move with a high likelihood of a first-round hit. The T-72A has 39 rounds in total, 12 APF SDST, 21 HEFRAG FS, and the remaining 6 HEAT FS. Additional ammunition is stored on racks behind the turret basket as well as indentations in the rear floor fuel cell and the second forward right cell near the driver. The T-72A second armament consists of a new design of a 12.7mm caliber NSV machine gun installed on the Commander's Coppola and one 7.62mm caliber PKT machine gun mounted coaxially to the right of the main armament with 250 rounds of ready-use ammunition. The 12.7mm NSV machine gun, on the other hand, can only be fired with the commander's upper body exposed. The ground roll maximum sight range is 2,000 meters, while the anti-aircraft roll's maximum sight range is 1,500 meters. At the front of the turret, two banks of smoke grenades, discharger type 902B 81mm, are attached, seven to the left and five to the right. The T-72A has a similar configuration to all Soviet tank series, with the driver's compartment in the front, the battle turret in the middle, and the engine and transmission in the back. The T-72A features a three-person crew with the driver sitting in the front and other two in the turret, with a gunner on the left and commander on the right. The turret has traditional Castile armor with a maximum thickness of 280 mm, the nose is around 80 mm thick, and the glasses has 200 mm thick laminate armor that provides between 500 and 600 mm of protection when inclined. The 72A has significantly improved armor protection, particularly across the turret's frontal arc. The turret has two light steel stowage boxes, one at the back and another on the right, slightly behind the commander's position. One cartridge ejection door is located at the rear of the turret. Night vision, NBC protection systems, and heaters are all standard on the T-72A. A TPDK-1 laser rangefinder sight, TPN-349 gunner's night sight, and TPN-3 searchlight are installed on the right side of the 125mm main cannon on the T-72A. A combination TKN-3 day night sight with an OU-3 infrared searchlight mounted over the top is mounted in the forward half of the Commander Capola, and another TNP-160 day periscope is mounted on either side of the combined day night sight. A TNP-160 day periscope is mounted in front of the gunner's hatch, and a TNP-65 day vision block is built into the hatch cover itself. A panoramic day-night sight is positioned in front and to the left of the gunner's hatch and is used in conjunction with the infrared searchlight mounted to the left and in front of the sight. The T-72A, like most other Russian tanks, has a dozer blade located beneath the nose for clearing obstacles and setting fire positions, and it can be equipped with mine-clearing equipment such as the KMT-5, the KMT-6, and KMT-6M2. The dozer blade may be deployed in one or two minutes, allowing the T-72A tank to set its own defilade position without the need for engineer assistance. The T-72A can have a snorkel placed on the backside of the turret for deep fording. The T-72A series takes around 20 minutes to prepare for amphibious use and is ready to use within two minutes of exiting the water. The T-72A can cross a river up to 5 meters deep using the snorkel. Propulsion T-72A is powered by a 780 horsepower V-12 piston V-46-6 multi-fuel air-cooled engine. The engine will run on three different types of fuel and the driver will be given a dial to adjust the engine to the type of fuel being carried. Each side's torsion bar suspension consists of six road wheels with the idler in front, drive sprocket in back, and three return rollers supporting only the inside of the track. At the first, second, and sixth road wheel stations, shock absorbers are installed. The T-72 uses a single pin track with rubber bushes which has been retrofitted to some earlier T-55 and T-62 MBTs. The T-72A has a total road wheel travel of 285 mm. Four removable spring-loaded skirt plates are installed over the forward half of the track which unclips in action and extends forward at a 60-degree angle from that vehicle side to provide some protection against heat bullets. The T-72A has a top speed of 60 km per hour and a maximum cruising range of 480 km, 
which may be increased to 550 kilometers by adding two additional fuel drums to the back of the chassis. And that concludes today's video. We hope you enjoyed it, and if that is the case, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel for more great material in the future. I'll see you later. Goodbye.